Hey guys, it's Fancy and you're watching the Good Wives Network. And today we're going to talk about 1Q21 point microdeletion, gastroparesis, and why Gypsy Rose Blanchard's documented medical history explains not only her childhood conditions, but the symptoms she still has to this day. This isn't about belief or opinion. It's about genetics, gastroenterology, and records that don't disappear just because a story changes. These conditions require real tests and extended monitoring. These tests and procedures are in her medical records. So we've been talking about the 1Q21.1 microdeletion for some time, but what is it really? So the 1Q21.1 microdeletion is a confirmed chromosomal disorder associated with neurological, developmental, and severe gastrointestinal dysfunction. Research and clinical literature consistently document that individuals with this deletion commonly experience poor growth and short stature, failure to thrive, reported to the majority of affected individuals, hypotonia, which is low muscle tone, dysphagia, difficulty chewing and swallowing, and gastrointestinal mobility dis disorders, including gastroparesis, as well as chronic constipation. These aren't rare side effects. These, they're the core features of the deletion. There is no single behavioral or hormonal cause. This issue is systemic and neurological. So let's now talk about the gut-brain connection. The autonomic nervous system controls digestion, swallowing, and gut movement. When it's impaired, as it often is in 1Q2, 1.1 deletions, the result can be delayed stomach emptying, which is gastro gastroparesis, severe reflex, GERD, chronic vomiting, poor nutrition absor absorption, early satiety, constipation severe enough to require enemas, inability to maintain weight through oral intake alone, and critically, malnutrition even when food is available. This is exactly the clinical picture where feeding intervention becomes medically necessary. So in pediatric gastroenterology, the G-tube and Nissen fundiplication, I hate that word, are often performed together in children with severe reflex and feeding failure. The Nissen prevents stomach acid from coming back up the esophagus and the G-tube allows nutrition and medication to bypass unsafe or ineffective oral, oral feeding. This combination reduces vomiting, prevents aspiration, protects the esophagus and teeth, and allows adequate nutrition for growth. It ensures adequate calories, hydration, and medication delivery. This approach is well-established and standard pediatric GI practice, especially in neurologically affected children. So this was all provided the other day by Becca on her last video. So if you look up here, it does show that she was receiving internal feeding or feeding a G-tube from July of 2000. She underwent G-tube placement and Nissen fundification after extensive evaluation at Tulane Hospital feeding hospital before placement, as indicated in the doctor's letter to disability on Gypsy's behalf. Her records explicitly describe severe feeding aversion, inability to consume sufficient calories orally, gastroesophageal reflux disease, developmental delay, and neurological impairment. This was not a snap decision. It followed intensive feeding evaluations and failed oral intake. So this letter was written in 2001, and it shows up there that this is what happened. 
and it's a little hard to read, so I'll read the letter for you. This letter is in reply to your request for a summary statement on Gypsy Rose Blanchard regarding her application for disability benefits. Gypsy is nine-year-old female who I have cared for since June 2000. Gypsy has a history of developmental delay, impaired vision and hearing, microcephaly, and seizure disorder, which has a history of gastroesophageal reflux disorder and severe feeding aversion. Gypsy is so fearful of eating that we had to place a peg tube, I can't read that word, for nutritional purposes. Prior to the peg placement, Gypsy had undergone intensive evaluation and attempted treatment for her feeding aversions by the feeding hospital. She was not able to consume enough calories by mouth to ensure her survival. In addition to her other impairments, Gypsy is a very anxious child. In this document from May of 2004, Corum Healthcare documented continuous interior feeding since July of 2000, tube-fed pediasure providing full caloric and nutritional needs, weight gain from 36 pounds to 57 pounds, height increase from 120 centimeters to 130 centimeters, an achievement of 100% recommended intake for calories, protein, vitamins, and minerals. As this shows you, it further documents that she received five cans of Pediasure daily via tube and her weight did increase from 36 to 57 pounds. And she was meeting all of the, the markers that she needed to, re to, to um, meet. And you can read this, you can pause to read. Um, the feeding tube worked. Her growth improved. Her nutritional deficiencies are corrected. Her survival was stabilized. And that is the opposite of fabrication. This is where the paper trail becomes undeniable. This picture is from the crime scene photos. It was found in the back room of cluttered mess. One of our followers pointed it out to us and we want to thank them. This box is from Corum proving she was still getting nutritional supplies from them in 2015. So what does this all mean today? Adults with childhood onset gastroparesis and dysphagia do not simply outgrow with these conditions. To this day, Gypsy continues to exhibit difficulty swallowing and chewing, preference for soft or mashable foods, avoidance of dense or fibrous foods like steak because they're hard to swallow, ongoing difficulty maintaining weight even during periods of increased metabolic demand, including pregnancy. These are classic adult manifestations of childhood onset dysphagia and gastroparesis, chronic vomiting and GERD cause, acid erosion of teeth, enamel breakdown, dental decay, and gastroparesis causes food retention, nausea, and re repeated amesis. Dysphagia and hypotonia make swallowing unreliable and unsafe, both of which is well documented and diagnosed in her records based on real tests she could not fake. Adults with these conditions often rely on soft or toddler textured diets, small frequent meals, easily digestible foods, avoidance of meats and solids that require prolonged, prolonged. That's not performance. That's adaptation. None of this requires abuse to exist. It requires a malfunctioning gut 
gut, and nervous system. This is well documented in patients with gastroparesis and severe GERD, especially when symptoms begin in childhood. Dental deconstruction is a known complication of chronic reflux, not proof of neglect or fabrication. I'm going to end it here. We'll come back, back for part two where I talk to you about the barium swallow test. Have a good one from The Good Wife, serving up true crime, one dish at a time.